Hey everyone, it's Thomas DeLauer with Jigsaw Health, and today I'm here with Mike Branson over here at Core Clinic in Scottsdale, Arizona. Hey guys. Today we're gonna to talk about three ways that you can fix your squat. And I wanted to talk about this issue and I wanted to talk with Mike about it because personally, I need some help on it. I'm someone that's suffered tremendously with always feeling my squats like in my lower back and never really getting the right, the right feeling. So how can we fix this? Sure. The, the three primary ways that we can look at getting your, uh, your squat better. I think the first way we go from is going from narrow to wide. Uh, I think the third, the second way would be to put something maybe underneath your heels and then try and maybe front squats. Got it. Well, if we, uh, I'm going to show you my squat and have you kind of break it down for me because you're no. definitely kind of an expert in that, no. that world. And you know, for a long time, even with just a bar here, it's like, if I go in a traditional squat position, it's like when I get down to the bottom, I'm always coming forward, right? And I'm really trying to avoid that. Yeah. What's uh, what's causing that? I, yeah, I think one of the primary causes for that would be potentially your ankle, your ankle mobility. Okay. And then uh, thoracic mobility as well. And uh, unfortunately, a lot of people, you know, their ankles just can't get in the proper position. So we want to try to do something different with that to take the ankle out. Uh, the first thing would be to try to do is go ahead and make your stance wider. Okay. And uh, we just go ahead and get into a wider stance. What happens is it ends, it ends up getting in a, into a almost like a sumo squat or sumo uh, deadlift position, and that allows your uh, your ankles to remain pretty still and a lot of movement going into your uh, your knee and your hip joint, keeping your upper body more upright. Got it. Something like that, correct. Which is allowing your upper body to be more upright. Staying much more upright. Yeah. And I, I definitely can feel a lot more like activation through through the glutes, like through the hamstring and right. the glutes. I'm not feeling the, the pressure on my, my lower back yeah. so much. And you obviously are getting down deeper as well. Yeah. yeah. And is that okay to go down deep? I mean, what do you suggest? 90 degrees? I think it's. I think 90 degrees is great. I mean, it's, it's, it's better on your knees. It's better on your back. So people have the mobility to get down lower. But you know, it's not necessarily necessary unless you're a power lifter or, or an Olympic lifter. Gotcha. Um, but if for guys, they were really trying to just get really good, uh, uh, good muscle activation. Ninety degrees would be just fine. Got it. Yeah. And then you mentioned about putting a block on your heels or elevating yeah. your heels. Yeah. And take out the ankles again. Same kind um, of premise. Same, yeah. Same type of premise. Um, like a weight. Yeah. yeah. So we can try to weight. Um, we can try. Let's try the board first. Okay. I have a board here. Um, you can, if you don't have a board, you can weights. We'll do both. But um, go ahead and put your uh, same kind of thing. Just put my heels there. Yep. So do I want to go wide again, or do I want to, this time I can go a little it, bit more It's narrow. dependent on the person, but okay. if, wider if your ankles still don't have the mobility, you can go wide and do this. Okay. It's very helpful. Um, have a lot of uh, patients and athletes do this with a board, uh, and it really gets them to allow them to get in a proper position. As yeah. you can see, uh, you're in a great position now. Uh, your knee's in a, a fantastic position. Your upper body's in a great position. It just takes the ankle out that much more. Gotcha. And yeah. since I have, uh, we can do another video on this later, but since I have... You know, such flat feet, I know that my ankle mobility isn't great to begin with. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't have a lot of that flexion. So, interesting. And then yeah. the last one that you mentioned was switching from a back squat to a front squat altogether. Right. right. So, and that's, can you explain a little bit about how that works? Well, when you have the bar on your back, the, the center of uh, the vector of force that's going from the bar through your body has to go through your chest, through your femurs, and then down through your shins and through your feet. When the bar is in the front, it changes the, the biomechanics of how the weight's distributed through your body. And by doing that, instead of going through your body, it's going in front, and it puts your back and spine in a better position when you're going down. Gotcha. And uh, by doing that, you're going to be more upright. And it's less, it actually puts less stress on your back. Everyone thinks front squats put more stress on your back, and it's not. It's not that. It's just not correct. Gotcha. So what about dog squats? <laughs> dog squats. He does a lot of those, right? <laughs> up and down, up and down. So now I've done I've done front squats before. Move this out of the way, and I want to make sure. I mean, because you can probably point out while we're doing this video. Uh, I know there's a couple different ways, front mm -hmm. squat. I, I used to always, I have the wrist mobility, so for some reason yeah. this way works fine for me. Yeah, coming across. But the other way like this yes. works too. That's right. And it's all about your shoulder and wrist uh, mobility and getting yourself in the proper position. Some people don't have that. I, I wish I had the same flexibility in my ankles that I do in my wrists. I don't know why I can do this. So essentially, that makes perfect sense now. So, And I notice when I front squat, I don't have to go as wide either. That's correct. So right. essentially... Yeah, yeah, you're naturally upright because you're not you're trying to prevent the bar from falling forward. That's right. Yeah. Extending extending back, and then also the, the weight how it's distributed through your body is is, is better. It goes right through your uh, your thighs at a different point and allows you to get more upright. What about any any quick tips just for those of us that are watching when it comes down to 
actual amount of weight and rep range when it comes to doing a front squat? I mean, are you still kind of a fan of sticking in kind of the 10 and up range or is it really going heavy kind of overrated when it comes to front squats? Yeah, it's, well, the problem is that once you get, when you go heavy, it's, it's about holding the weight in front with your upper body and your back strength has to be there. And if it's yeah. not there, it's, you're going to get yourself in a bad position. You put a lot more stress on your, potentially put more stress on your back than you would want. Gotcha. So a higher repetition would be helpful with that with lower, lower weight. Yeah. Um, so that's what my recommendation would be. And especially when you're first starting out with front squats, you should really start with a lower weight, really get your form down and increase the weight as, as tolerated. What about using a block with front squats? Do um, you ever see that done or is that unsafe? It, it, well, it's not necessarily unsafe. It just depends on your mobility. But most people don't need a block okay. for doing front squats. Got it. Yeah. Well, there you have it, Jigsaw Crew. It's Thomas DeLauer and Mike Branson with Core Clinic. And those are the three ways that you can switch up your squat to try getting a little bit more glute activation, try getting that lower back out of it. And just to recap on that, we are looking at switching from a back squat to a front squat. We're looking at potentially putting a block underneath your heels. And then we're looking at going a little bit wider, a little bit more of a sumo squat. Thanks, Mike. Pleasure. Thank you.